Hello and welcome to the Flexible Benefit Plan presentation for the 2006 calendar year and plan year. My name is Karen Rao and I am from CBA and I'm the account executive for the district. Today's presentation we're going to split into two parts. So part one is the flexible spending accounts, which will cover the medical flexible spending account or the FSA, the limited purpose FSA, as well as the dependent care assistance plan, which is for daycare. In part two of the presentation, we'll be covering the health savings account options that you also have here at Los Rios. What is a flexible benefit plan? Well, it's also referred to as a cafeteria plan where you can pick and choose the different benefits that are good for you, that you want to utilize. It's under IRS Section 125, and it's a vehicle for pre-tax benefits funded with your personal payroll deductions. You pay no taxes on these benefits at all for your medical, dental, vision, and insurance premiums and that's automatic. You can also save money on your out-of-pocket medical expenses, referred to as the health FSA, or your out-of-pocket daycare expenses, the DCAP. What is open enrollment? It's the time where you can actually pick your benefits for the year. You'll need to do this before the year actually begins. Fall is the period of time for picking your medical FSA, limited purpose FSA, and dependent care. Adjunct employees are ineligible for these particular benefits. Spring is the time to pick your health, dental, and vision benefits. And that's that pre-tax or POP part of the benefit that we refer to. That part's automatic. The flexible spending account allows you to stretch your actual dollars as it eliminates all federal, state, social security, and Medicare tax. A sample of the savings is listed here. You can see that it's quite significant on expenses that you're going to be spending for you and your family anyway. The first benefit bucket is referred to as the medical FSA. This is not your insurance. This is a separate benefit. Like a savings account, this amount is pre-tax, except there's a use it or lose it portion to it. It's funded through payroll deduction in equal installments throughout the year. Deductions occur every payday that falls within the 2016 calendar year, starting on January 4th. Your final pay warrant, if retiring or terminating mid-year, will also have a deduction in it. 100% is pre-funded by Los Rios on the first of the plan year, January 1st. Here's a sample of some of the qualifying expenses, although there's literally thousands and thousands of qualifying medical expenses that you can use your medical FSA benefit for, such as chiropractic, dental, laser eye surgery, some of those things that you might not think of. Orthodontia, which is a large expense, can be put through this pre-tax benefit. There's also over-the-counter expenses for medical supplies. There's over 27,000 medical supplies that you can use your medical FSA for, like Band-Aids, first aid kits, even reading glasses. In addition to that, you may also use your medical FSA for over-the-counter drugs and medicines, provided that you have a prescription from your medical provider. So just like you would for any other pharmacy item, 
that you have prescribed to you, go ahead and get a prescription from your doctor so that those expenses can be covered. Things like aspirin, allergy medications, are things you might wanna get prescriptions for so that you can have those expenses pre-tax annually for you. Be sure to get your prescription before you actually purchase the item. The items covered under the prescription, debit cards will not be permitted on over-the-counter drugs and medicines but they will be permitted on the other 27,000 medical supplies items that you have access to. Be sure to obtain that pharmacy receipt. There is no medical FSA reimbursement for the items listed here. And it's important to note those so that you don't set aside dollars for an expense that won't be covered under this benefit. Although counseling is covered for mental health issues, you'll notice that it's not for marriage and family counseling. Massage therapy might be something that you're getting for your general health, but unless it's prescribed for a specific medical condition, that would not be reimbursable to you. If you have any questions before you make your election, you're welcome to contact CBA and we'll assist you with your personal questions. There's no taxes on qualified medical expenses incurred by you, your spouse, including same gender spouses, your dependent children, your adult child through age 26, even if they're no longer your federal tax dependent, or anyone else who also qualifies as your federal tax dependent. Domestic partner or other adult dependent that do not qualify as your tax dependent should not have money set aside for their expenses. You may elect any amount up to $2,550 for the 26, 2016 calendar year. Your annual election will be deducted in equal installments throughout the plan year to make it very simple for you to fund that account. You may re be reimbursed up to your annual election at any time. So it's like electing an individual benefit structured specifically for you. Be aware not to elect any more money than you can actually spend. Otherwise, the money would be forfeited and you wouldn't want that to happen. A confirmation and welcome packet will be sent to you upon enrollment to provide you with all the details on how to claim your funds. All new participants will receive debit cards for easy access at point of service to medical care and, and payment for medical expenses. The cards are good for three years, so do hold on to those. And if you're a current participant, your individual cards will be reloaded with your new benefit amount. If you participate in an HSA, unfortunately, you can't also participate in an FSA. So keep in mind that that applies to both you and your spouse if applicable. So you need to make a choice between one or the other. The benefit also that's offered is referred to as a limited purpose FSA. If you're enrolled in the WHA 1800 HSA HMO plan, you also have an HSA option. In addition to that, you can elect the new limited purpose FSA. The limited purpose FSA acts exactly like the medical FSA, except it's exclusive to dental and vision expenses only. There, it, they can still be expenses incurred by you and your family members. You can't be enrolled in both the full medical FSA and the limited purpose at the same time, so you do need to make a choice between the two plans. Debit cards are also offered for the limited purpose FSA, but of course are limited to dental and vision providers only. Why not just use your HSA for your dental and vision expenses? First of all, the entire limited purpose FSA is available to you on the first day of the plan year, whereby you need to save up money out of your HSA. 
Second, the limited purpose FSA election is 100% tax free, just like the full medical FSA is. And third, by using your limited purpose FSA for your dental and vision expenses, you won't deplete the funds in your HSA. So it's an additional avenue to save taxes on, on benefit money that you already will spend for you and your family members. You will be provided with a bright red Benny card in order to access your funds to be used at point of service where Visa is accepted. You can pay for those qualified expenses right there at your doctor, pharmacy, wherever you need to for qualified vendors. 75% of your debit card payments will actually auto substantiate. Those will be for the set co-payments under your medical plan as well as your pharmacy expenses. 25 of your percent of your expenses, however, may require documentation, so we always encourage you to retain all your documentation for expenses that you use your medical FSA for. You also are allowed to have a PIN number on your card. So if you'd like to use that card at point of service as a true debit card, you can just use your PIN. It's not completely paperless, but the debit card certainly is a convenient way to access your funds. We'll ask for documentation about five days following your expense if you need to submit that documentation to CBA. For employees with HSA and the new limited purpose FSA, you'll be able to use a single Benny card in order to access both accounts. The money will be segregated between the specific buckets. So it's a smart card. Is there any questions regarding the medical FSA at this time? Okay, we'll move on to the Dependent Care Assistance Plan. The Dependent Care Assistance Plan allows you to set aside money for your out-of-pocket daycare expenses while you and your spouse, if applicable, are working or looking for work. You can also use those funds to pay for adult dependent expenses. So keep in mind that would be an elderly person or a disabled person who lives with you who is also your IRS tax dependent. If you pay for custodial expenses for someone to be cared for while you're working, those expenses can be sheltered through this particular benefit and you can save taxes on them. This is a completely separate account from the medical FSA. So two different benefit buckets. You can save on eligible expenses for your children who are under age 13 or those adult dependents living with you that qualify as your federal tax dependent. You can also save taxes on pre-kindergarten tuition because the IRS has, tax, has classified them as daycare expenses. Once your children reach kindergarten age or above, then those are considered school or tuition expenses and would not qualify. But you can still use this account for your before and after school expenses if you need to pay for care while you're working. It's okay to use this account for day camp expenses that are in lieu of daycare expenses. But there's no overnight camp that would be covered. Ineligible daycare expenses that you need to be aware of would be um, your provider may not be your tax dependent so the provider of your daycare the provider may not be your child under age 19 they would not qualify there are no overnight camps or 24-hour care that would qualify and also, if you pay for food, supplies, or trips that are broken out from the base cost of your daycare, those would not be eligible either, so don't include those. Neither are those classes that you may send your kids to to enrich them, such as piano lessons, karate, dance, that type of thing. Even if they replace your daycare, they're not considered custodial, and therefore they would not be eligible. 
You may elect up to a full $5,000 annually pre-tax for your daycare expenses. But don't elect more than you're actually spending. Just like the medical FSA, that money is tax-free and will be divided by your paychecks in equal installments starting January 4th. The dependent care account does not have a debit card for that particular benefit. And you can't receive more than the money you've contributed so far through payroll deduction. Claim processing is easy. You can use your debit card for the medical FSA. You can go online, file claims online, you can do it the old fashioned way and write out a form and submit your documentation to CBA. We take them by email, fax, or even regular snail mail. And we can reimburse you via direct deposit, which we highly recommend so it goes directly into your bank account, or we can mail you out a check. That's your choice. CBA processes claims daily. And if we receive your claim by noon on Tuesday or noon on Thursday, we'll process it for the next reimbursement day, which is Wednesdays and Fridays. At that time, we'll either transmit or send your check out. Here's a quick example of the home page where you can manage your personal benefit with CBA. It has a quick online claim filing button right there on the home page for easy access. We also have a very nice mobile app whereby you can file your claim directly on your smartphone, take a picture of that documentation, and send it right to us. For non-debit card claims, We'll send you that welcome packet with instructions. And like I said, you can fill out an old-fashioned claim form and just send us that documentation. For all documentation, you must include the following five items in order to back up your expense. The date of service, the provider name, the patient name, a description of the service that was performed or the expense that you incurred, and the amount that you personally owe for that expense. If that expense is covered by insurance, you'll need to have your insurance provider process that expense first and then claim the balance that you owe of that particular expense for reimbursement. Things to remember, have your carrier process that claim first. You may only change your election under very limited circumstances such as birth or adoption of a child or when you get married. So be careful to make an election for the amount you know that you and your family can actually spend. You can, however, change your daycare election if unexpectedly you change providers and the cost goes up or down. Any change of status needs to be reported within 30 days, so be sure to contact your benefit team as soon as you know that an expense is going to change. Active participants in the spending accounts may be reimbursed, reimbursed for expenses incurred between January 1st, 2016 and March 15, 2017. This is because your plan has what is called a grace period. That gives you the ability to continue to spend your prior year funds for a full two and a half months following the end of each plan year. In addition to that, you will also have 15 more days to submit your claims for reimbursement. The final filing date is March 31st each year. So keep in mind, if you don't submit claims, your money will be forfeited on March 31st of the following year. So be sure to get your claims in early. It is important to note that if you were to leave the plan during the year, terminate employment with the district, that you have a 90 day period following your loss of coverage in order to make your claims. So be sure to note that earlier claim final filing, final filing date should you leave during the year. It really does pay 
to put money into these pre-tax benefits that you're already spending out of pocket anyway. So you can save taxes on your health insurance premiums, which is automatic as I mentioned, but also save money on the out of pocket medical expenses that you and your family members are going to incur anyway. And of course, save money on those daycare expenses. There's a huge tax savings on that daycare because you can elect up to a full $5,000. Most participants save between 25 and 45%. So that's a huge savings at point of service. How to participate? You're going to enroll online at cbadministrators.com and click on the reimbursement account. You'll put in your Los Rios ID number without the W. And if you've logged in just for the very first time, you'll use password to access the account. The first thing it'll ask you to do is set up a secure password known only to you. You'll click on the Enroll Now button and you'll be on your way. Please note that the deadline to enroll in the FSAs this year is Monday, November 23rd at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So don't wait, enroll online right away. If you have questions, you're welcome to call your Employee Benefits Department. You can email CBA or call us at 800-574-5448. Are there any additional questions today? I just wanted to clarify, we actually have a 31-day window for mid-year changes. Terrific. So you have an extra day, if anything occurs, in order to make a request to, for a qualified change. Thank you so much. That's the end of part one.